Weg. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Welcome, everybody. I'm Kevin Lee, and this is Live with Kevin Lee. And this is a show where we uh, interview and where we uh, really I bring forward leaders and luminaries and lessons that are really enlightening for the spirit, for our community. And this is something that I've been uh, doing for a while, a couple of years now, about almost two years, and really just finding people out there who walk their talk. You know, sometimes it's not easy to find those people. Their tongue does not match the tongue in the shoe, right? And uh, I wanted to make sure that we brought forward people that are making a difference in the world, making a difference on the planet. And so today I have somebody very special. She is not only a friend of mine, but she's a colleague of mine as well, a, a beautiful speaker, life coach. I wanna tell you a little bit more about her. So. Uh, this lady is amazing because she really is a rock star across many different industries. Dr. Virginia LeBlanc, I call her Doc V, just as everybody does. And she is a very fast rising star on the global scene. She is a one girl revolution, which I think that's a brilliant concept because she's transforming lives to greatness. She's transforming uh, life circumstances and businesses through her next step coaching program and also through her consulting platforms. She is highly sought after, very well respected in a multidisciplinary expert and international thought leader, uh, purpose to heal hearts, to free minds, to catalyze thinking and offer connections. And with over 25 years experience in the US Navy, with universities and national councils, she helps her clients develop and, and optimize their projects, their programs, and their organizations from a very interesting perspective. And she calls that the human capital value. I think that's a beautiful uh, term. Her passion is to meet you, you, where you're at, where, and to serve as that bridge uh, where you were meant to be. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome to the stage Dr. Virginia LeBlanc. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Kevin, for that beautiful introduction. <laughs> You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Well, definitely earned, well earned. You've put in the time, you've put in the education, you've put in the work. And I, and I think, you know, it's interesting. I read your bio last night. I have, I've known you for a while, uh, a good year. And uh, more than a year, but I never uh, heard the word rock star. And you know what? Uh, and especially a rising star, that's exactly how looking at you and your career and what I know about you, that's exactly how I would describe you. So I think that's very appropriate for our listeners and viewers today. So welcome. I just, I'm just delighted to have you. I am super excited to be here and, you know, just to be with you and your audience. And I know this is going to be an exciting time, hopefully information filled time. Yes. Um, and I just appreciate you and our collaborations. And uh, yeah, so I'm excited. Let's get awesome. started. Well, well, let me let me ask you this, because I know that yes. you have a bestseller book. Would you be yes. willing to share that with us? Do you have it with you? I sure do. You never go anywhere without it. Right. It's a business right. card. Love it. <laughs> So, Perfect. Um, yeah, so this is Love the Skin You're In, How to Conquer Life Through Divergent Thinking. So this is my love letter to society, as I like to call it, on social conditioning and how we think, our thought processes. Um, so literally, it's, a, it's my autobiographical story in which I talk about, you know, how I met um, social conditioning, how I had my revelations, reconciliations, and renaissance moving through my life, how my lessons learned, and my advice to those who encounter same similar paths. And, you know, and really, I have a saying about thinking without a box. So this is what this is what love the skin you're in is all about. Um, you know, it's not just about dealing with um, difference in skin color. It's about that internal process to find self-love and to wow. manifest that into self-worth value and being your own person, the true, what I like to call as the true you. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's very important because so many people, even with, 
you know, over my uh, probably 15 years within ministry and public speaking as well, a lot of the audiences, one of the things I noticed was people were coming to my events or to my, my as a congregational attendance, but they were coming from a place of, of being damaged. Uh, they were seeking healing because they didn't love the skin they were in. They yes. believed what others told them, which was probably not true. Uh, most most of it was not true. And but it didn't number on people. And so people didn't see value in themselves and they didn't believe in themselves. And I think that's really one of the uh, 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 the core messages in your book is believing in yourself. You are worthy. You are valuable. Your message is important. Right. It is. You You hit the nail on the head, Kevin, and literally you're all in my mission statement. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Would you share your mission statement? Absolutely. It's to heal, rebuild, and transform lives from the inside out and put you back in business. So, you know, we, we approach it from my 3R philosophy, as I mentioned before, revelation, reconciliation, and renaissance. Revelation is all about receiving and resetting our mind. That's where everything starts, right? And mm -hmm. then the reconciliation process, you know, just rediscovering and recovering from our hurts, hangups, and habits. Because that is our stumbling block. That is our challenge. That's why we can't accomplish the things that we were meant to accomplish or be the people we were meant to be because we, we've not reconciled the present with the past to move into the future. And then the Renaissance piece is all about restoring and redefining our path forward, you know, and not fearing uh, the Renaissance, the rebirth of our the life. Rebirth. I love that. Mm -hmm. You know, in some communities, we can even say rebirth or resurrection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's always been there. Let's bring new life back into that. Yes. And uh, I think those are beautiful uh, concepts within that program. Uh, what your your message, if you will, and. Uh, you know, tell us a little bit about the company that you're the CEO of, the founder of, uh, because I want to hear a little bit more about that as well. Yes, absolutely. So my company is Defining Paths, mm -hmm. and we we have we are we serve women, uh, retiring active duty military and veterans. Um, that's our main focus. We serve anyone who comes to us because that's our, that's just our, our heart centered yeah. mission and our, and our servant heart. But that's the focus. Um, and with that, we we have a number of programs. Um, I'm excited for the launch of our Next Steps for Vets uh, membership portal that will also um, launch our online course next year. So the membership portal is our Christmas gift to vets Yay. to bring them into. Yes, <laughs> it'll launch on Christmas Eve. Good. And there'll be all kind of goodies in there, um, all kind of opportunities. Also in the new year, we're launching a new program called True Vision. Mm -hmm. And for vets, this is going to stand them up in the civilian world. Wow. Literally, um, so the course is entitled Next Steps for Vets, Be Your Own Boss After the Uniform Comes Off or When the Uniform wow. Comes Off. And it's all about those who have always wanted to be entrepreneurs um, to we're literally going to lay the foundations for them. We'll provide the personal, the self-development coaching, the business foundations, literally stand their business up, everything for them, for just a ridiculous, uh, just ridiculous benefits. It's gonna be life-changing for these veterans um, because they've served and protected us. And, yeah. and we at Defining Paths, that's a, a, a huge part of our mission and our Next Steps for Vets program. And so I'm super excited about that. Um, oh, but uh, in several other programs for women, Grace Under Pressure member portal. Um, but the, the event that I am super excited that's coming up about is my partnership with the Susie Carter. <laughs> love Miss Susie. Yes, yes, I love Miss Susie. Yes, yes. my business coach. Yes, absolutely. And uh, as you know, uh, I'm also a graduate of the Global Leadership Program. Well, yes. Susie and I have endeavored into um, a super exciting partnership where we're going to change lives uh, on the business level. Literally, you know, the money people spend to go to business school. No, not because I used to be a professor and ran right. a program in higher education. So I know the money that they spend for the time period that they go to school, we're literally um, teaching them all of these tenants um, within a year's time. It's an amazing program of growth and development and those who already have businesses who are trying to uh, establish their legacy and move forward. So we're doing that, but we're starting that with a launch of Make It Rain. It's important to get the mindset right. Make it rain the legacy event. It's time to leave that legacy for humanity, Kevin. You Love know, that. so we're, we're literally bringing forth a new way to do business, a new business model. And, and this is the make it rain. Uh, you guys, this is uh, just the basically the homepage of 
one of the links is actually, I believe the link is in the description below. It will be definitely after our uh, podcast completes today. But you all can go and check this out, get signed up. It's a free event. Would you speak a little more about this event, what they'll be learning? Yes, yes. Well, I will tell you, you will be learning. Uh, it's five day challenge, only an hour and a half a day for the five days in the evening. So 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, U.S. time zone. Perfect. And it, so we're going to be dealing with clearing out all that gunk, you know, the reconciliation process mm -hmm. that I was talking about. So we'll have a speaker who, Karen Abrams, who is a master at doing that. Um, yes. And then we'll have, we'll have Norma Hollis, who's going to come and talk to us about our, uh, our authenticity and how that plays a role in establishing a legacy and being successful in business. And we'll have the amazing Kay Williams come and speak about financial legacy and how to just start setting that up and looking um, your mindset to address that. And then of course, Susie will be there on Thursday to talk about just prosperity and, and just the innovation in business, finding your passion um, and, and really getting clear the mindset. And Dr. Catherine will, will end that week. She will be phenomenal close talking about passion and purpose as well. Everything is about just finding your passion, understanding your passion, recognizing your dream and turning that into your legacy through being your own boss and establishing a business. Super excited about it, which that will roll into a summit at the end of the month where we'll continue the conversation. Next Fantastic. steps connecting the dots where you will Fantastic. be one of my speakers. <laughs> yes, yes, actually I'll be joining you. I'm super excited about that. So definitely we'll be we'll be sharing that with the tribe and and yes. uh, in my in, in our channels, but uh, and we'll speak more of that at, at Make It Rain as well. There'll be a welcome and introduction invitation and uh, that'll be a fantastic summit as well. So I'm excited about that. Thank you. Yes. And Kevin, but, if I may, mm -hmm. may I add real quick? Um, also, what the, the Make It Rain, the, the legacy event is all about, it's not just about money. That's why I wanted to share with you the what's happening every day. It's about the mind, body, soul connection and how that's tied to our ability to be successful and to then leave a legacy. Powerful. Really true. Because if we're not incorporating uh, the very nature of what we are, which is the soul, uh, and we're just focused on the body and the mind, we're missing a part of ourselves. And I, I truly believe uh, that when we begin to do that, it, it just, it really synergizes our efforts and it may, and, um, and well, research has even proven because I've, I've read the research that when we find our purpose, it tremendously changes all, many areas of our lives, our health changes for the better our life there's actually a, a, an extension of life they found uh mm -hmm. their uh people's um uh, uh at work in a corporate setting they work better they produce more they there's less uh sick time less call out time there's less issues people seem to be a lot more focused in in different areas so purpose is so important and it's really you don't reach your purpose unless you're going to be digging into the mind body spirit of of the individual yes. i love that yes Powerful. Well, let me ask you, I have a question for you. If mm -hmm. you could be remembered for one thing, what would it be? For one thing. Oh, goodness. One thing, Kevin? <laughs> one, only one. <laughs> it would be a champion for the underdog. Yeah, I like that. You know, it's kind of how I've been my whole life as well. It really is for the champion for the underdog. Uh, and I, I'm curious to know, is that how you were even as a child? Were you always uh, uh, siding with the underdogs or? Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It, it's always been a part of, uh, you know, my, my nature, uh -huh. um, who I am, you know, speaking out, standing up for, you know, truth, justice, equality, mm -hmm. fairness. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. It's why you probably why you went into the U.S. Navy, right? Well, it's a duty. Well, to 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 yes, to um, to serve the country in a civilian capacity uh, with the Department of the Navy, wow. um, as well as you know, just uh, the Grace Under Pressure mm -hmm. launched that uh, a program that I've just launched with a partner, Laura Lane, up in uh, Canada. She and I uh, have put together a amazing <coughs> program, a membership mm -hmm. portal, and course for women service members. So yes, um, yeah, that's it's just fantastic. who I am. That's my makeup, my DNA. I love that. Now, what what one piece of advice 
uh, could you give somebody who's trans transitioning in their career, meaning going from one uh, 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 type of career, one type of job into another job? Yes, yes. Uh, I've had a lot of experience at this. So this, this is where I've, I've earned my name, the pivot maestro. <laughs> So the one piece of advice I would give is to face fear, embrace fear, and make it your ally. Mm. Don't be afraid of change. I love that. Really true. It's no longer a fear if you can face it. Exactly. You know, you take the power away because uh, fear really comes from the unknown. So if you face that which you don't know, you begin to discover it. And the more times you face it, uh, the smaller it gets until eventually you realize there's well, I know everything about it. I, I can't possibly be afraid of it anymore. So exactly. it's really is powerful. That's a good statement. I like that. Yes. Uh, thank you. Let me ask you this. What is, what's one of the biggest uh, challenges that you've had in your career or in your company, maybe this latest pivot, uh, and what did you learn from it? The biggest challenges. I... So in my career, I would say my biggest challenge has been a woman in the workplace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, um, a woman in the workplace in a system that was not designed for or built by women. Mm -hmm. And just having to fight that battle, um, being labeled or stereotyped as a certain something because mm -hmm. of credentials I might have or a way of doing business. Mm -hmm. um, so... I would say that the biggest challenge that I have learned or lesson that I've learned from that challenge is to is to change the game. Good. I like that. And not play the game. <laughs> right. I love that. You know, it really is about charting your course. And and uh, and I always say, you know, it's interesting. I keep going back to ministry, but that's really where I I really got my footing in uh, learning to deal with the public, uh, the public sector. And uh, because uh, uh, in where I really had a voice and a decision. But one thing I discovered was I had to learn the rules of the organization I was playing in in order to beat them at their own game <laughs> when I saw bad behavior mm -hmm. so that I could hold them accountable so I could drive this the machine of, of the organization as as I was a part of it in a direction that was better for all, even for the organization, or to, or to, to go up the chain of command, if you will. Yes. And, uh, and I think that's so important. And, I, and is that what you ended up uh, experiencing? Yes, yes. And bottom line, people don't like change. No. You know, and particularly if they f have a fear or fear their place in that structure. <clears throat> um, and this is why I developed the concept of human capital value. I dislike the term human capital management because it makes us feel like th it, it identifies us as objects or right. things or assets, as opposed to human beings, living, breathing, dynamic human right. beings uh, with, you know, cares, concerns, lives, wow. um, you know, and, and just it, it neglects the value of humanity and how we should um, interface with each other, even in the workplace. You know, mm -hmm. there's so much research out there about how paying attention to to the the work life balance for a better mm -hmm. lack of a better term, or just being more people centered in your mission, changes the game, changes wow. the bottom line, increases productivity, makes everyone happy, makes them more loyal, <laughs> makes them want to stay with you in the workplace. Um, so you know, I I am in defining paths. That's one of the pieces that we teach in the business leadership portion. Um, so, yeah. Fantastic. Well, let me let me ask you this. If you if what what do you think if you what is one thing that you wished you would have known uh, before you began your current career, this uh, your company defining path? Yes. One thing I wish I would have I wish I would have discovered the passion earlier. <laughs> me too. Or, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> me too. Um, but I guess the thing that I wish I would have learned it, the when I had the revelation that I needed uh, that I lacked self love that was mm. that was profound to me uh, because you know yeah. I I was wearing mask you know for most of my life different I had a whole storage of masks yep. <laughs> and you know for different situations and you know different circumstances um, but you know when life kept happening and I had to keep pivoting 
I started thinking it was something wrong with me, that I was doing something wrong. But lo and behold, I had to go through all of those experiences and eventually connected the dots to realize there was nothing wrong with me. This was my passion. This was my purpose. This was my calling. So I, I wish I would have discovered self-love a little sooner. It's really true. I think, you know, Eve, as a symptom, I, I will even admit, I have no problem saying that. And I, and I speak about it in my book, which was the concept of, uh, for self-love, which is I was finding value for myself in pouring my soul out to my church community and giving everything to them, not giving back to myself, not taking time for myself, but pouring constantly into other people. And what I found was I really was, uh, was heading towards burnout because I was literally pouring my, my life force out into other people, giving them whatever they needed. They could call me. They could always reach me. They could show up at my house. Uh, I was always on the church property and I was always, uh, uh, and I was at every event that I booked, put up, put together and hosted. Even if I wasn't the speaker, I was there and I gave way too much. And yes. I realized I was finding love I was finding the feeling of love for myself, thinking that was filling me up because it made people happy. And what I discovered was I wasn't loving myself. I wasn't mm -hmm. valuing myself. And, it, and that only happened a few years ago, not long ago, that I start mm -hmm. realizing that. And I think that's a big problem with a lot of people. So many aspects of your company and your different programs, your book, it speaks to that. And I love that. That's what I've really noticed with everything about you. Yes. Uh, and we're important and we're worth it. And, and it's Absolutely. not being selfish to, to do things for yourself first. It's self-ish, but it's not the negative connotation of selfish, like a lot of people think. Yes. So nail on the head, and I can so relate, Kevin, you know, um, we, we did, I've dealt with issues like people pleasing, um, yep. having a savior complex, yeah. uh, you know, I'm a recovering workaholic, all of that. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm still a workaholic, but it's decreasing. <laughs> well, you know, when you're working, your passion doesn't feel like work, you know, <laughs> I love what I do. I have no problem yes. working late. I love it. Yes. So, you know, you, you hit the nail on the head. There's so many different aspects to self-love that, that we've just not realized or connected because we're so busy being busy or, you know, the white noise of life is always, um, you know, interfering with our, our quiet time and just our processing and getting in, in connection with our soul, you know, through and finding our and centering our spirit. So, yeah, I can totally, totally relate. But we cannot serve. We cannot walk <coughs> our calling when our glass uh when our saucer is is not mm -hmm. full you know um so yeah yeah it, it was a lesson as well for me oh that's powerful well i i'm just so proud of you i think you know the events that you're putting on make it rain which is coming up and some of the other events and summits that i know that will be announced very soon <coughs> pardon me <coughs> allergies <laughs> but i would tell you i'm just so proud of you because i think our world needs uh, our, uh, these audiences and these communities need people like you standing and shining because in the work that you do as a woman, as the work that you do as an African-American woman, the work that you do as a business woman, as a military woman, you, you check off a lot, a lot of boxes. And I think your shining gives people permission to stand up in how they see themselves in you. And we need more people like that. I consider you a luminary because you literally are lighting the world, showing people the path that they can take and you're taking them by their hand or allowing them to take your hand and you're guiding them forward in a very safe and supportive way. And it's so needed in the world, so needed. So I just celebrate you. And that's why you were important to have on my show. That's why I reached out to you. So I thank you again. Thank you so much, Kevin. That just blessed me. You have no <laughs> idea how much. And it just, you know, affirmed what, you know, why I created Defining Paths and what we're all about. And, uh, you know, and just what we're doing with True Vision. Oh, this is going to be huge. That's going to be launched on um, New Year's Day. And it, it is literally going to be a new day for, for um, individuals who are looking to heal Powerful. and seal their, on, uh, their businesses mm -hmm. online. So, yeah. Well, now, where can people find you? Like, your, would you share your website address uh, verbally? And then, of course, I'll make sure we get that put into the body of this uh, presentation this evening. But would you share a little bit of how the, where they can find you? 
Absolutely, absolutely. So on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, my handle is Doc V Next Steps Coach. So on all three of those, you just type that in and you'll find me. And our website, our online home presence, uh, we're very proud of, please go visit us, is definingpaths.online. Defining paths with an S dot online. So oh, we'd that... love to have you reach out and connect. And if I'm not mistaken, do you have a TV network? Yes. <laughs> Yes, in partnership with the wonderful Paula Fellingham and the Win Win Women Network. I am a wow. founding show host. Yes, every Monday. Thank you, Kevin. Every Monday, actually, we're getting ready to record or live stream um, on, uh, it's called Candid Conversations with Doc V over on the Win Win Women uh, dot com website you can connect to the show and uh, it's every monday at 8 30 uh, 8 o'clock p.m eastern standard time and i'll make sure that we share that with the people as well in this in this podcast so yes i think that's do. fantastic and everyone is invited men and women uh, actually i have a regular recurring re uh, men in, <laughs> and the show it. and their voice just lends so much validation and healing to the women that are participating so Powerful. Doc V, thank you for bringing your light to the world. You're such a blessing, not only to me, but I had to share you with my tribe, my people. Mm -hmm. And I just want to celebrate you and just keep shining your light. Go do amazing things. I know you will. Uh, and uh, I and I salute you. I, I appreciate the work that you do. <coughs> Pardon me. With the military, with women, with people transitioning uh, in, in from all different cultures and, and communities. And you're, you, tr I keep saying it, but you truly are a light in the world. And that's so rare to find. So I just appreciate that you were willing to come. You had, you made time to be on the show this evening. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to thank you as well for being a part of our program and being great viewers and, and sending in your messages and your comments and staying in touch with us. And uh, from my heart to yours, I want to just shine my light and say thank you. I'm Kevin Lee. I'm your brother in Purpose and Possibilities, and I'll see you soon. <laughs> perfect, perfect.